Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So this is another video related to taxonomy. Okay, so in taxonomy, we need to study DNA based composition while identifying or classifying the bacteria or organism, right? So that is why this is included in taxonomy or even in molecular diversity when it comes, you need to know the GC content, okay, percent GC content and that is nothing but the DNA based composition. Okay, so let's start to this topic. So DNA is most important tool used in microbial taxonomy, right? We know that uh, in genotypic methods, you do all DNA related studies, right? So DNA based composition is one of the classical genotypic method, right? So we had or we will see that in polyphasic taxonomy that there are two different types of methods which are used in identification and classification of organism. One is phenotypic that is depending on the observable characteristics and another is genotypic that is based on GNA genetic material. Okay, studying of the genetic material or products which are related to the DNA that is RNA and protein that comes in the genotypic method. Right. So organisms can be grouped by comparing the relative percent of bases present in the DNA. Okay. So we know that there are four bases abbreviated as AG, T and C of which AG that is adenine and guanine are purines and thymine and cytosines are the pyrimidines. Right. So base pairing always happens between A and T that is adenine and thymine and there are two hydrogen bonds okay and g in between g and c there are three hydrogen bonds right so the base stackings when it comes uh, or when we study the base stack stacking interaction it is always seen that the pairing of gc is more stable because of these hydrogen bonds okay even for breaking these hydrogen bonds more energy is required right so this was about base pairing. So in making base comparison, we determine the total amount of GC in a sample of DNA and express it as a percent of total DNA. Okay. So when you do DNA based composition studies, you do base comparisons. Okay. You will compare how much GC pairing is there, how much GC uh, bases are present in the DNA sample or a DNA fragment and depending on that percent you will get the percent for AT that is adenine and thymine okay so say for example you have if the DNA has 60% GC then you will subtract that from 100 and you will get answer that is 40% and that is nothing but your AT pairing that is adenine and thymine content in your DNA okay so when you get a percentage for GC, simply you have to subtract that from 100 and you will get answer or you will get percentage for AT that is adenine and thymine. Okay. So the base composition of an organism is generally stated in terms of percent of guanine plus cytosine and is referred to as GC content. Okay. So base composition only determines the total amount of nucleotide base present. It does not give any in indication or information about the sequence of these bases. Okay. Very important and don't con get confused in this point. Don't write this in your answer because it is very important. Okay. Don't me mess up with this line. GC contained or base composition. It just gives you about idea about the amount of nucleotides present okay it does not give any information or indication related to the DNA sequence okay you cannot get information about what is the sequence of the given DNA fragment that for that this is not the method for this is not the method or study that you can do okay so in bacteria around 23 to 75 75 percent of GC content is seen that means the ratio or we can say the percentage they vary from 23% to 75% in case of bacteria. Okay. Similar percent of bases that do not themselves proves that organisms are closely related. 
So if in case there are two organisms which have same GC percentage or same GC content, so it is not necessary that both the organisms are closely related. Okay, because the sequence of the base might be quite different. Correct. If the sequence is also same, then you can say that organisms are closely related. But if the sequence of the given DNA fragments which you are studying, if the sequence are quite different, then organisms are not closely related. Okay, so here are in this slides, there are two important points. Don't mess up with these. Okay, you will write your answer wrong. Okay. So next is about determining or how we how will you determine the base composition? Okay, you need some methods to do that. So first is hydrolysis of DNA. You can do hydrolysis of DNA and then you can do HPLC analysis. Okay, so this is also a very good and rapid method. It is accurate and it gives you a good idea, good results about each base. Uh, the amount of each base that is con uh, that is present in your DNA. Okay, so this is the first method. Second is thermal denaturation. Okay, so very simple method, but that is not that accurate compared to the HPLC. Okay, so thermal denaturation method in which the double stranded DNA is heated under control conditions. Right. So now what will happen? The DNA strands will get separated. So from double stranded DNA, your DNA will now get converted to the single stranded. Okay, so this is the step where you take absorbance at 260 nanometer. Okay, so if you get increase in the absorbance, then yes, the denaturation is successfully done. Okay, so this is this is the mechanism here which is used or which is applied to know the temperature or time and temperature which is actually required to get a double stranded DNA converted to single stranded. Okay, so this depends on the hydrogen bonds which are present in bases. That is in G and C, there are three hydrogen bonds and in A and T, there are two hydrogen bonds. We know that, correct? So if a DNA fragment which you want to study, if it has high GC content, which means there are more hydrogen bonds to be broken down, correct? So in this case, the energy that is the heat which is required to break all those hydrogen bonds between G and C will be more. And thus the time taken to break or to convert the double stranded DNA to single stranded DNA is more, correct? So these are some factors that also affect the melting temperature of the DNA. Okay, so that is what we will be studying here. So thus, if there are more GC pairs, the temperature required to disrupt the bond will be greater than that required to the AT base pairing. Correct? So TM is the melting temperature, is the temperature at which DNA in the sample is half denatured. Okay, so you can see a slope here in graph. So the red uh, midpoint that is plotted on the graph of the raising turn it gives TM and a direct measure of GC content. Okay, so now you can use that value and use this equation to get your GC content. Correct. So there are some factors which affect melting temperature. So those are nucleotide content. Obviously, it depends that if the given DNA fragment is GC rich or not, the temperature required and time required will vary. Correct. Next is ionic strength. Correct. So we know that DNA has a phosphate backbone and it has a negative charge. Okay. So the question comes here that how these both strands they are uh, bound together. Okay. So histone proteins play a important role here. They neutralize the negative charge present on the backbone of the DNA and it helps to bind the single strands together. Okay, so depending on the ionic strength in DNA sample or in case of say if you are working in the laboratory, we sometimes uh, suspend our DNA sample 
into some ionic solution such as sodium ions correct so if the ionic strength of your solution is high the temperature will require and time that will be requiring for the breakdown of the dna will be high okay even the length of dna also matters okay so if your fragment is smaller then it will get denatured fast if your fragment is long enough then it will take more time okay so this was about dna based composition and in short you can write this answer for 3 or even for 4 or 5 marks i guess this is sufficient okay so if you have some doubts do mention in comment box and, or you can reach out to me at my mail id that is microbialconcepts@gmail.com okay so this was all about dna based composition i had already uploaded a video for importance of taxonomy and next video that i will be uploading is polyphasic taxonomy then phenetic approach for bacterial identification and phylogenetic approach okay so do check those videos on my channel and thank you for watching and please like my videos share these videos with your friends and do tell them to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to follow me on instagram by same handle that is microbial concepts thank you